Okay, Hi everyone, it's me, KP, and I'm still here in my studio, The Man and the Maker, <laughs> but now I'm on YouTube instead of Facebook. Um, kind of excited because this is my first time being live on YouTube. Woohoo! <laughs> so I'm going to give everyone a chance to find me. We're going to share the link because, as you know, um, this is day number three of World Watercolor Month, and um, we tried to go live at our scheduled time at 11 um, over on the Rubber Moon Facebook page, but it is having a lot of technical difficulty. In fact, um, that's how I started my broadcast this morning was by saying what trouble I was having even seeing any pictures or posting any pictures. And so I was hoping that it wasn't going to be an issue, but um, it is. <laughs> so I'm going to give everybody just a few minutes. I'm just going to leave this sitting here um, before I go into, uh, you know, into day three and talk about it and everything. I just want to give everyone a chance to find me here because it's, again, a first time that I've been live on YouTube. So we're going to share the links and hope that people can migrate over here. If not, we still will share this video on the front page of Rubber Moon and try to post it uh, wherever is relevant as soon as we can. So I'm really bummed because I was so excited about, I mean, I'm still excited about the morning, but um, I was really into it, so <laughs> I can't wait to get painting. Um, just give us a few, and we'll share some links, and hopefully see you in a minute. I need the link. Can you send me the link in Facebook? All right, so I, oh, Emily, Emily, you made it. Yay. I'm going to just give me a couple more minutes. I'm going to share the link in a couple more places um, so that hopefully other people will find us um, because we had to make the switch. Um, so I'm, and I'm kind of excited. I don't know if you already heard me over here talking, <laughs> but um, this is my first time being on YouTube live. So that's sort of fun. Um, and I've been saying I was going to do it for a while. <clears throat> But, uh, and just, you know, it's so easy and I'm so used to getting on Facebook um, that, you know, I just never have made the migration over here. So um, I guess this will help me to do that. <laughs> uh, hi, Phyllis. Okay, so um, let me just share this link a couple other places and we'll get started. Oh, good. Perfect. If you're on your lunch break. All right. I think I shared it everywhere that I can. Um, Emily and Phyllis, if you're here with me, can you let me know if you feel like this is zoomed in nicely? It looks pretty good. It looks really great on, on, um, oh yes. Thank you so much, Emily. It looks really good on my monitor. Um, and so I'm hoping that looks good to you. And how is the sound? Does it sound fine? I'm not talking too loud or too soft or no echo. No echo. <laughs> Am I just right? Mr. Moon says he'll fix it if it's messed up. So great. Wonderful. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm hoping that people can click on that link and just find me. 
um, over here. And like I said, if not, we're still going to embed it on the front page. Yay, Jan made it. Um, we're going to embed this on the front page of the of our rubber moon uh, site. And then we'll also try to post it wherever we can. I'm really sorry about the hiccup, but <clears throat> Facebook's been acting weird for a couple days. So who knows? Anyway, I'm going to start over. I'm just going to let you know that I am still working with my core mini half pan set and also some of my tube, tube watercolors like these. Okay. And um, I have some squeezed out in my little palette here and a few on my larger palette over to the side. I am working with my long rounds. Again, my long round brushes, a number eight and a number four. I have two jars of fresh, clean water. Um, and I think I told you all about this, but if you missed it, it's such a good tip. I just have to share it. I bought these jars. Um, they're just vases, I guess, you know, that you, a lot of people get with uh, orders of flowers. And also I think they use them as fish jars when you um, are in a carnival, <laughs> but it has this nice scalloped edge. Um, and they're super inexpensive. I think I paid 50 cents or a dollar at the thrift shop. I love them because I can use them to set my brushes on um, when I'm not using them because you never want to leave your brushes sitting in water like this, okay? That is one thing that you should never do. I've done it on accident a few times before, I will admit, but it's horrible. It will ruin your brushes and... Um, especially your water, well, any kind of brush, of course, but especially your watercolor brush, which is so soft and pliable, and you always want it to be able to come to that nice, beautiful point. All right, yes, I'm so glad you all found me. Um, I am super happy to be here, um, although, like I said, it wasn't intentional um, since I usually go live on Facebook, but now this is forcing me out of my comfort zone, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, here was day one and day two. All right. Or, well, I know it's backwards on the screen, but day one was my moon. I thought it would be appropriate to watercolor a moon face <clears throat> for the beginning of World Watercolor Month. And then yesterday we did Frida. So for day three, we're going to mix it up just a little bit. And I have a few different samples to share with you. They're basically done the exact same way, only this one is monochromatic, done pretty much all with one color. And then these two, obviously, one is done landscape and one is done, um, well, horizon and, or what, you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm so confused. One is done upright and the other one is done sideways. How about that? Landscape and horizon. Is that right? Landscape and what's the other one? Can't think. Brain dead already. This is the same exact thing, only I took the liberty of stamping on top of it. Okay. And doing a little wash on that girl. So this makes a precious small piece of art that would fit so cutely into one of those little mini frames. Or you could mount this puppy right on a card and it would be good to go. And you're going to see, oh, portrait. There you go. Thanks. Portrait and landscape appreciate you guys. <laughs> so this is so fun. I've been having such fun with this technique. I will also show you um, that I've done it a little bit uh, larger of a scale as well. And I think it's really fun and beautiful. Um, would be great in a journal, would be great Oh gosh, I think even just as a frameable piece of art, um, you could put some beautiful lettering. My friend Gail Nation does the most gorgeous lettering and I would love to have her letter something on top, um, you know, beautiful large stamp, whatever. So these are just a few and I have taken and scaled it down um, and I've done some stamping as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I am gonna keep it um, this portrait way because I want, I think I want all my finished pieces to be consistent. Um, so I'm going to work with it this way, but I did want to show you that it works wonderfully well either way. And of course you can do it a couple different ways. Again, this one's really monochromatic. So I started this one, this one, <laughs> I'm confused when I look in the monitor. Um, so I, 
I did a light wash, like a gradient wash across my paper first and let it dry really well. And then I went ahead and started my layering. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do this one for you since, um, since I have it here and we'll, and I'll, they're pretty quick. So I can actually do more than one for you today. Um, if you know, time allows. All right. So we'll just dig right in. I have my little, this is a brand new stamp that I just designed. I, um, just came out with like three little, uh, sort of mixed media stamps. Um, this is not a rocket science piece. So of course you could use whatever you have handy. Um, this is just three little, it's called itty bitty buds and it's just sort of like three little dot flowers. And I'm going into the same color. I used a cobalt teal <clears throat> and I'm just going to paint that right on there and stamp a few times and if it gets a little blobby <clears throat> or whatever that's kind of okay Again, just like I told you with the stamping that we did with both the Frida and the Moon, it doesn't really matter um, very much if you get a nice crisp image. That's not really what I'm after. I'm just after a little pattern and texture as my first little layer. And then I'm just going to go in and here is where I'm going to take a pretty watery brush. And um, of course, I always have a tendency, as you know, you've watched me paint to blot it off a little bit because I want this first layer to be very loose or very um, almost, almost water. I really want n hardly any pigment on there. And I'm going to work with my, my washiest, my lightest, because really, even if I just went in with a little bit of tinted water, you're still going to get a nice, you know, little impression. Does that make sense? I really, I just don't want to go in with very much pigment. And of course, if I want to take more time and, <clears throat> excuse me, really sort of form uh, my little leaves, you know, I can take a little more time and actually paint them to have a little more shape. But I'm, I'm not. I'm just going to be super loose and fast. And again, you know this, if you do something that you don't really like or you get a, a blob that's too much, you can just blot it right out. Um, as long as your watercolor is pretty wet, you can almost like erase it completely with just a little clean water and blotting it up a little bit more. Okay, but I'm just going to continue like that. And I'm going to build up uh, little darker areas. this over here. So really all I'm doing is just getting a little more heavy handed or a little bit um, more opaque paint, not being quite so, so wat watery or washy. And, you know, again, as you progress in your, in your painting, you will come out with your own mark making. Your little vines and leaves probably won't look anything like mine.
And now I'm just going in and putting some little random lines and you can also do some stronger washes again just still using all the same color but here I want to build up a little bit of depth and value in the front layer Again, if I feel like I need a little more, you know, abstraction or texture and sort of that background, I'll work very pale and washy again. <clears throat> And I'm now I'm just going to go in with a little clean, fresh water and I'm going to put another little like glaze sort of over the whole thing. And voila, I have a beautiful little background. Again, I could add a lovely stamp right when this is good and dry to the top of it. Or a beautiful sentiment. Of course, I, um, as much as I like working uh, monochromatically, that's great. Um, and it definitely will have its place. You know, I love color. So, of course, I could go in and um, add color. And so let me go ahead and do one of these for you too, because it is pretty quick and, um, and I want to do one with color. I also have this other stamp. This one's called Dashing 2. It's just a random little dash lines, but I really like that to add texture into some of these. And I'll show you that one next. <clears throat> so for this one, since... Um, I'm going to use color. I think I'm going to do some little yellow flowers. And I might mix a little orange also with my yellow and give a little bit of gradients. A little bit of variety. And honestly, my stamp, if you can see that, I don't know if you can see it very well, but my stamp was still a little bit uh, dirty with some, uh, I think, some of the teal paint. So it didn't give a very pretty yellow, but that's okay. It'll all be blended together soon. No need to stress. All right. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to start with this lavender color. And this is one of the colors that I have that's actually a Holbein. It is not core. Um, but I have mixed titanium white and the dioxazine purple to make a beautiful lavender color. So again, I'm just going to work quickly and... Um, be quiet here for a minute. Again, uh, I will answer any questions or address anything at the end of the video.
So it's a lot of mark making, little dashes, little dots, and just um, sort of adding little bits of business where you feel that you want to start filling in. And we're just going to continue to layer colors. I so far had used a little yellow and orange for my flowers, lavender for my first set of vines or leaves, and then I went into a green gold. Now I'm going to go into my cobalt teal again. I just, I love this color palette. I think it's so fresh and pretty. A little strong on that color, so I can always pull it back with a little fresh water. I'll switch back and forth colors if I feel I need to. Again, just sort of, you know, step back from it for a second and see what needs your attention or where you need some more unity. Remember, I talk a lot about unity and variety, um, and that is an important part of the design process. I want some very light little areas in the background. And now I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna use a little bit of this um, thalo blue again for sort of the upfront. the areas that are closest to you. The foreground, that's it. <laughs> I knew it'd come to me. All right, so I'm using a little green gold. It got a little strong right there, so I'm just pulling it through again with some fresh, clean water, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in some lavender again here at the top. And I'm going to pull some of that. You can see how that, like, light wash, but even though it's very pale, it's still you know, it's still a value and it still sort of creates an atmosphere that really helps set everything off. And so I am just pulling some of that all throughout. So I'm, I'm not going to just paint over all my little, you know, flowers and areas, but I'm just trying to go in with that point of my brush and just hit it here and there around some of these areas. And if it does go over, if you end up painting over a little bit and pulling some of that color through, that's okay too. And you can even switch it up with some of the other colors that you've already used. So like right now I have just the smallest 
slightest bit of the cobalt teal on my brush. And remember, if you sort of hit your edges <clears throat> with some deeper values, it really has a tendency to help draw your eye in to your, to your piece. And so I do have a tendency to sort of do that. And again, stitch it all together just a little bit. If you have any areas that you feel you see some, you know, lines or some areas that maybe don't blend super well together and you want them to blend, then you're just going to, I always call it stitch it together with a little bit of a wash or a little bit of clean water. And then finally, a couple last things you can do. You can get a little water again and sort of touch some of your flower areas and that'll help them to sort of blend together a little bit or you could even go in with another color or you know like your yellow again and just hit some of those give them little centers if you want to the little the flowers give them little centers um, and then one thing I also like to do and I know you've seen me sort of do this pull in a little bit of another sort of unexpected color so like this this pale pink I have here and you could just give yourself a few little blossoms of that pink here and there. You can even pull some through this background sky area. I just am doing it again for a light, light little nuance of color and a little bit of unexpected play, I guess you could say. Um, and the other thing you can do, of course, um, and I like to do, but you just have to be careful, and that is to... Do a little splattering. All right. Ta-da! Oh, isn't it so pretty? And it would be so, so pretty with, um, you know, a stamped image right on there. Oh, <clears throat> I'm sort of partial. We like stamps around here. <laughs> Build up that value just a little bit more in the foreground. Woohoo! Yay! So day number three, what do you think? Day number three, two ways or more. <laughs> anyway, so yep, that is my watercolor, my watercolor for day three. Ugh, I can't even talk now. Watercolor for day three. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'll hang around here for a minute and go back through um, yes, Teresa, I do see a question. Um, there will be a broadcast tomorrow on the 4th, definitely, tomorrow at 11. Every day I will come here at 11 live. I do have a show, um, a local show later this month, um, so I will still post vi a video on the days that I'm at the show. Um, I'll still be posting a video at 11, but it will be pre-recorded. So every day, um, unless something major happens, I will be here um, to paint with you, um, although we might end up on YouTube again. So, um, I'll, of course, I'll let you know. So, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, and, you know, if you don't see me live on Facebook, then this is where I will be for sure. Yeah, so I do want to mention again that um, we are posting links to um, some of the different products and things that I'm sharing. So um, I always appreciate you using the links that we share because I will get a little bit of credit for that, for some of the things that we, you know, definitely don't or can't carry on our website. So yeah, I hope you do try it. I hope that it makes you brave to just layer, layer, layer and definitely use those stamps with your watercolors. It's so much fun and, you know, so easy. Um, anyway, all right. If no one has any questions, I will get going. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, I'm sorry about the delay and all that, but um, I'm just going to repeat myself and say, if you don't see me on Facebook, 
um, where I'm supposed to be at 11, then check over here at our Rubber Moon TV page because, um, yeah, it worked out great. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you and talk to you all soon. Mwah. Bye.